All right, so it's the end of the year, and Good Great Perfect is hosting their OPTC awards, and uh, it's the voting section. So there was the nominations that was like two, three weeks ago. Uh, now they're doing voting. So I'm going to share uh, my votes with you guys on YouTube and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash solaris333. Uh, so first one, best super evolution. Uh, this Legend Super Evolution has improved them drastically and made them viable for use today. Okay, I'm not picking Yamato because Yamato 6 star is not bad. There's nothing wrong with Yamato 6 star. Uh, these are all decent options. However, Sabo... Sabo's, like, the main reason that people like Sabo is that he has burn. Uh, but, like, realistically, if you need someone who deals, who's a, like, fighter, shooter, free spirit, uh, attack booster, there's a lot of, uh, options for that. There's a lot of Luffy characters that are options for that. I and mean, even just the combination of chain boost and attack boost. It is rare, but it's not super rare. But, like, he's clearly meant to be with versus ace, and there's just other subs you'd rather use for versus ace. Usually the utility. Uh, Germa 66 uh, made their special ability a three turn special rather than a two turn special because it added an extra stage to them. So that's actually a very significant increase. Uh, Onami got cooldown reduction and affinity boost when you have a dominant type. And I think that's it. And she deals damage, AoE. Um, so for me, it's between Onami and Germa, but I think Germa's got it for me. There's just more ways to use Germa. Uh, Onami kind of struggles because sometimes you don't have a dominant class or a dominant color in your team. And Yamato's not a huge buff from her uh, unevolved version, so... All right, where's uh, where's Super Evolution? All right, this one's easier uh, because it's not pudding. All right, let's see what Mihawk does. Six star Mihawk. Uh, there's no reason to use his uh, Captain ability, honestly. And his special ability is an HP cut, an orb boost, and if you have dex and int orb, so it's orb dependent, orb block, and then orb boost after one turn. I think his unevolved was perfect spaced, which isn't great. No, it wasn't even two turn. It was just a single turn. So yeah, I guess that improves his viability, but slashers just aren't going anywhere, unfortunately. So the same thing is probably gonna be said about Zoro, unfortunately. And the same thing is gonna be said about Sanji. Sanji, despite having some utility, the utility that he has is pretty rare. He reduces chain lock and chain coefficient reduction, which is not that valuable. And his boost is a two-turn boost, which Mihawk... I guess Mihawk has the benefit of being able to bring it into the next stage, but... I don't know. I think I'm going to do Zoro for this, but I feel like Pudding's going to take that award. I don't think a lot of people like pudding, but I think people undervalue pudding. 
Pudding has Bind and Despair in her special now, and she has, like, a better version of Double Special. So, not really better, but an alternate version of Double Special that doesn't take up one of her Limit Break slots, so, I don't know. I feel like Pudding is actually much better than people let her off to be. Best Rare Recruit. Uh, Robin, who reduces Bind... Or no, Despair and enemies um, defense up, percent damage reduction, and threshold damage reduction, and then changes all orbs to her own orb. Rockstar, which reduces attack down and despair and chain limit by five turns and barrier by two turns. Changes dex, or changes block into matching and then locks for two turns. Uh, killer. Killer reduces cooldowns by 2, Paralysis and Despair by 5, and then makes orbs beneficial for a Strength X quick for 3. And Killer's on the lower end there. Because Despair Paralysis Reduction... I mean, he has cooldown reduction too, but Despair Paralysis is covered by a lot of people. So I'm having trouble seeing the value there. Zoro, silence and attack down by five, locks orbs, and amplifies orbs for two turns. I think we're going to go with Rockstar here, frankly. Um, I don't know, I'm between Rockstar and Zoro. Robin, there's a lot of people who do what Robin does now. And then, I mean, Zoro's got silence reduction which none of these other characters have. But silence reduction is becoming less of an issue with captains that just reduce silence by 10 turns. Uh, I think I'm going with Rockstar. Rockstar has shown that he is like a valuable unit to have many times. Killer, only I've, he's only been desirable maybe once or twice for me. Uh, same with Zoro and Robin, half her kit is covered by captain abilities as well she has like roger to deal with where he just deals with despair by himself so there's no reason to use that part of her kit sometimes so i think i'm gonna go with rockstar best free to play unit kizuna olin Treasure Map Onigishima Luffy, Kizuna Kuja Pirates, or Treasure Map Shiryu. Uh, I need to look up all these characters because Olin, Kuja Pirates, Luffy, and Shiryu. Cost greater than 49. So, Onigashima Luffy, his captain ability is okay, reduces silence by one turn, and his captain is kind of neat. Uh, he reduces silence, attack down, and blind by five turns. He completely resists silence on himself, changes block orbs to matching, and, cha and uh, 2x attack boost, which is pretty solid. Uh, Kuja Pirates, which I've used a lot. Reduces defense up and percent damage reduction by 5. Boosts attack of shooter free spirit by 2. Attack of delayed enemies by 1.5, which is low, but they can activate a delay bypassing debuff protection if your HP is above uh, 50,000. So, I've used Kuja Pirates a lot, but Onigashima Luffy just came out. I have not used him too much. Shiryu I've actually used a couple of times. Because he gets rid of attack down and paralysis. I haven't used him for his affinity boost or his damage reduction. Really. And for me, poison is... Removing poison is worthless. And then Olin. Olin... Reduces silence by 6, percent damage reduction by 6, changes block and recovery orbs into semla orbs. 
and then amplifies the effects of int powerhouse and driven characters by 2x for 3 turns. Uh, availability of semblant orbs is neat, especially when you change block orbs. And it's a 3 turn 2x attack boost. I mean, for me, it's Kuja Pirates, because I've just used them so much. Like, they were great for this upcoming, or this recent Kizuna Jack. I use them on almost every team. Shiryu have only really used on Garp challenges. Uh, Onigashima Luffy, I haven't really had a chance to use. And Olin, I don't think she's going to have a time to shine until Super Class, honestly. But Kuja Pirates uh, has a part of her kit that's going to probably be valuable for a long period of time. Olin's part of her kit that would probably be valuable over a long period of time is her Semla Orbs. Even the silence reduction that Luffy and Big Mom share... Like I said before, like, if I were to wait until Super Class to make this decision, right? Olin's two captains are Dofi and Katakuri because she's driven in powerhouse for super class, and Dofi reduces silence duration, right? So I'm only using her for the debuff, or the enemy buff, and the orbs, and the attack boost, which is still a lot of her kit. But this is a tough question. I'm definitely not giving it to Shiryu. I think Shiryu is last out of these four. Man, that's a tough one. And like, I would have included the Dawn Creek Pirates if they were out when this voting and nomination hell is happening. Um, hmm. I think because I can see the longevity more clearly, I'm gonna go with the Kuja Pirates. But Olin with super class coming up, I can definitely see the availability for her because of how super class Dofi works and stuff like excuse me, and stuff like that. Best artwork. You know with the best artwork. Final Tap Law, Roger, V2 Kaido, or Zoro. Um, I'm going to personally include, uh, well, hold on. Best ink effect. And then, okay, there's no special animation one. So I'm going to include special animation in my decision process for this. And I think Zoro just has, a, Zoro and Kaido are definitely the two better ones. But man, Zoro's looks really good. Um, I like Zoro's art as well, his cover art and laws. Um, Kaido's feels like every other Kaido. And then Roger's is very safe, like it doesn't feel like, I don't know. It didn't really, like, Evolved Roger looks cool, but it doesn't give me that sort of sense of action and like he's in the heat of a fight nearly as much as Zoro and Law do. Like, it feels like you're in the moment with Law and Zoro. But if I'm including special animation, I'm picking Zoro. Because when I first saw Zoro's special animation, I was blown away. Best ink effect. I think I'm gonna go with Mori. <laughs> uh, for me, it's probably Moria or Law. Rogers is pretty simple, and Kaido's is arguably simple as well. But like, Moria has cool bats that flap their wings. And Law actually has his room projected over him. I honestly would have picked the Thousand Logs Straw Hat Pirates for this, but I'm going Moria. Most overrated legend. Last tap Luffy, Reiju, V2 Kaido, Luffy Sanchi. Um, 
I don't think V2Kaido. He introduced a new mechanic that we've used a lot. Um, hmm. I don't think Reiju was overhyped. I don't think any of these characters were overhyped. I think these were appropriately hyped. Luffy Sanji especially was not overhyped. I think he was appropriately hyped. Maybe last half Luffy. But everyone hated last half Luffy when he released, so I don't think he was overhyped either. <laughs> these are all bad choices. Um, I guess maybe Kaido. Because Reiju was kind of mid-tier. No, yeah, I guess Reiju, because Reiju stole the show and no one was talking about Vivi. Vivi was definitely the better legend in that batch, and everyone was talking about Reiju. So probably Reiju. Otherwise, Kaido. Most underrated legend. Moria, Whitebeard Shanks. Oh, Whitebeard Shanks, easy. Everyone knew how good Kid was once, like, one or two videos came out. And I don't think anyone questioned it either. Same with Fire Tank Pirates. But Whitebeard versus Shanks, everyone shit on Shanks. Pardon me, everyone hated Shanks. Like, I've seen, I saw people say that Shanks was the worst legend ever. Most improved legend. This is for a unit that has not seen a lot of play in the past, but as time goes on, it seems an increasing amount of play throughout 2021. Uh, probably V2 Shure Hoshi Mancher. I don't think Sugar has gotten more play, but Shure Hoshi Mancher, when they released, were like, eh. But with more teams abusing having double health, Shure Hoshi Mancher, I think, takes it. German 66 is close, though. And I don't- I think Kid has sort of phased out in use, honestly. And Sugar's kind of just stayed stagnant. Like, Sugar is a utility legend, and I don't think she's going anywhere. Jerma has found a new place, but Shirohoshi Mancherry on release wasn't that great. It was good for the event, and then no one used it until, like, Last Half Kid or a bunch of other teams came out. Favorite game mode content? Garp Challenge, Kizuna, slash Pirate Alliance Kizuna, Rumble, or Treasure Map? Mm -hmm. Uh, Kizuna. I actually do like Kizuna. Best new update feature? Candy Stacking, Pirate Alliance, Power Up System Overhaul, Stamina Beam. Uh, I'm actually torn. I like the Power Up System and the Stamina Meat. I think the Pirate Alliance is neat, but it's not my favorite. And I think Candy Stacking is neat, but it was overdue, and it just felt like I needed to have it. And by the time I got it, I was like, great, moving on. Um, Maybe it is the candy stacking, honestly. I think it is candy stacking. Like, both of these are in the same vein, where it's just time save. Like, this effectively didn't change too much in my life. But this saves me time. And I think candy saves me the most time. I know what- yeah, it's candy stacking for me. Because with candy stacking, I don't have to think about what characters need what candy. I can just open up a character and be like, all right, cool, this is the candy I need. I don't even have to look for the candy. All of it's in one thing. I don't have to do weird math to get them up to my maximum amount. It's easy. Like, candy stacking makes it easy. The power-up system overhaul just removes time. This removes time and thinking. <laughs> The less I have to think, the better. Most anticipated character slash feature. New game mode, Luffy vs. Kaido, Roger vs. Whitebeard, Treasure Map Revamp Overhaul. As much as I love the new game mode, I need Treasure Map Revamped, please. Like, I'm always excited for new units, but I'm less excited for the characters. I am more excited for the gameplay that these characters bring, so... Like, this could be Luffy versus Usopp, or Zoro versus Killer, or anything. Like, I don't care 
who this character is. I care about what features they bring into One Piece Treasure Cruise. And new game mode, I, I'm i excited for it, but I don't know what to expect. So I can't keep my hopes up about that, but a treasure map revamp or, or an overhaul is something that I know what I want out of it. So I would be looking forward to that the most. Worst Legend of the Year, Halloween Shanks, Kuma, V2, Mar V2 Blackbeard. Uh, considering one of these is actually good. One of these is just super situational. Like, people just pushed him under the rug. Like, they just didn't care about him. And then Kuma uses a mechanic that no one uses anymore. Better. Like, he's Halloween Law, but better. Because he actually has a lot of health to play with. I'm gonna go Blackbeard, because the style of play that Blackbeard promotes isn't a style of play that I think many people use. And it's definitely not a style of play that I use currently because I take a lot of time not playing OPTC and doing other stuff with OPTC, so if I wanted to do a team of V3 Blackbeard, it's gonna be a real janky team. It's not gonna be... A team I'll be able to build easily. He doesn't- he's not conducive to easy team building. These other characters are simple enough that they're easy team building with interesting mechanics. Other than Shanks, he has no interesting mechanics. But Kuma and Marco have interesting mechanics. Blackbeard, his mechanic is interesting but it's tedious. And then Shanks is just plain and I think he gets shit on more than he does- he is underrated. Banner of the Year, Ace vs. Akainu, Onigashima Trio, the pre-6th Anniversary Sugo Fest. I don't think I pulled it all on the Sugo Fest, or the World Cruise Sugo Fest. I think I've got to go with World Cruise. Uh, that Sugo was really good to me. Moment of the Year, 11.2 update producer video, announcement of global Japan schedule sync. Just the schedule? Or the sync itself? World Cruise Event Yamato release. Uh, I don't know. I think this is going to have a lot of recency bias because 11.2 was huge. Um, but I think the sync is more important to me. I think the sync shines brighter than all of that. Alright, Legend of the Year. The, the Legend of the Year. Um, I think it's unfair to give it to anyone but Roger, frankly. Uh, Roger set a precedence for how good a legend should be. Like... <sighs> There's- all these other characters are good, but they have their flaws. Other than Ace and Sabo, with 11.2, like... Once 11.2 came out, then Ace and Sabo don't have really any major flaws. Other than it takes time to get your super swap out. But Roger is like quintessential. Like most players should try to start with Roger or aim for him if they can't get him right away. So, like, and there's no Jack in here. So what am I gonna do? I can't vote for Jack. It has to be Roger. Alright, that was it. So that's my, uh, my votes for the OPTC award show presented by Good Great Perfect. Uh, I'll throw a link to this, uh, vote, uh, form in the description so you guys can take a look at it yourself and submit your own votes. And then it looks like at the end of the year, so probably for their New Year's podcast episode, they'll be going over all the winners. So that'll be fun to check out, see what the entire community thinks about a lot of these characters. So that has been me. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.